Hello, everybody. Today we are going to introduce the Adaptive Behavior Assessment System, third edition. Uh, it was developed by Patty L. Harrison and Thomas Oakland and published by Western Psychological Services. The assessment kit includes a manual, five different rating forms, and an intervention planner. The ABS ABAS-3 is a norm reference assessment. It determines the performance of the individual in comparison to average performance of a normative sample. It is a standardized assessment that has uniform procedures for administering, documenting, and scoring. The different rating forms are used to gather information about an individual's adaptive behaviors in relevant settings. The forms require a sixth grade reading level and take approximately 20 minutes to complete and are available in English and Spanish. The forms include the parent and primary caregiver form for ages zero to five, a parent form for ages five to 21, a teacher slash daycare provider form for ages two to five, a teacher form for ages five to 21, and an adult form for ages 16 to 89 years. This assessment could be used by individuals with developmental delays, autism spectrum disorder, intellectual disabilities, learning disabilities, neuropsychological disorders, sensory or physical impairments. Its uses include assist in diagnosing and classifying various developmental and behavioral disorders, identifying functional limitations displayed by children and adults with a variety of challenges and disorders, documenting a person's eligibility for services and programs, planning and monitoring interventions designed to improve an individual's adaptive skills and daily functioning, and to facilitate research efforts such as programs, evaluations, treatment outcome studies. To administrate this evaluation, the appropriate age form is presented to the respondent. The evaluation is available both in paper and online formats. It should be made clear to the respondent that the form should be completed in a quiet place with no distractions, and when possible, this should be offered to them. For kids 0 to 16, an adult who had the most recent prolonged contact should be responsible for the response, as well as teachers and 16 to 89-year-old respondents can include roommates, close friends, caregivers, supervisors, and others that are close to them. Next, the purpose of the assessment should be disclosed to the respondent. Then instructions for the assessment are administered, starting with demographic information. There is a zero to three rating scale used and the respondents are encouraged to answer every question to the best of their ability. The differences between a skill deficit and performance de deficit should be discussed. A skill deficit, which receives a zero score is when the person has not yet picked up the adaptive skill and a performance deficit, which receives a score of one, is when the person has the skill but rarely uses it. Next, the behaviors that are sometimes performed receive a two, and the behaviors always performed without assistance receive a three. Aside from these scores, there is an area to check if the respondent is guessing on an item number, but it is okay to have okay occasional guesses. In administration, you can choose to only perform some areas of the assessment, but be sure to make it clear to the respondent which areas will not need completion. Sorry, you're muted. Some examples of communication um, would be using others' names or titles like mommy or daddy, or responding to yes or no questions by nodding or shaking their head. In social, some questions are regarding the number of friends you have or saying thank you when receiving a gift. So when you receive the form back before scoring, it is important to look through the form and be sure that all of it has been completed. Skill areas cannot be scored if there are three or more items left unrated. If respondents are unable to read, they can either be read the questions and respond verbally to each item or the evaluation can be conducted in an interview format. Um, and for scoring today, we'll be using the example from the book to explain. Uh, to begin scoring, transfer the demographic information from the first page to the score summary page. 
transfer the current date and date of birth of the person and calculate chronological age. And next, tally up the guesses made on the items and record the total in the total guess box in each behavioral area. If there are four or more guesses, discuss these points with the respondent to see if they could qualify and if not, use professional judgment to determine whether to continue scoring that adaptive skill area. If there are many guesses, consider asking another respondent who may know the individual better. And then calculate up the raw scores for each skill area and add them up in the summary page. So right here, I have included a summary page um, and it, uh, it has the communication, the community use, functional academics and all the other raw scores. Uh, listed right there. So as you can see, the communication raw score is 39. So I'll take you to the next page. And then you see that under communication in the left picture, there is 39, which gives the scale score of seven. So if we go back, there's the skilled score of seven there. Um, and you do that for each adaptive skill area and add up the GAC at the bottom, which equals 78. And then you go back to the back of the book and the 78 is in the 30th percentile and the standard score is a 92. To get an idea of the behavioral responses exhibited by a client, as OTs, we don't spend much time with the client in different environments. This form is in intended for the people closest to the, to the client to get a better understanding of where the client is struggling and will help us incorporate appropriate interventions for the client. And then on the next slide, we have our references. And that is how you use the ABAS.